Hey, it's Drybear. And if you aren't playing the Wayfinder 1.0 release, you possibly are missing out. So you may have heard about Wayfinder a little bit ago. They did an open beta test and honestly, it didn't go well. They added, got a ton of negative reviews for their initial open testing phase and then they fell on hard times ever since then. It was a game that was slated to be an ARPG MMO with a lot of social features, online aspects, matchmaking, shared social spaces where you'll trade materials, craft, form parties, grind for gear, and if you like looter shooters or just looter RPGs or ARPGs, it was right up your alley. However, when they did their open beta launch, they did a whole bunch of feedback gathering and a lot of the issues were around the actual performance of the networking. So if you look back on the open beta testing, especially on Steam, you'll see a lot of negative reviews going around not being able to start matches, not being able to join lobbies, not being able to connect to other players, generally just being stuck in queue trying to get into the game, nothing really functioning, and they got a bunch of backlash for that, and honestly, it was deserved. Now, if you have followed the story of Wayfinder since then, they had since been dropped by their publisher, Digital Extremes, Warframe developers as a publishing arm of them and they were working on it as a multiplayer game but they decided that they didn't want to lose out on shipping the game that they had worked so hard on so what they did is they basically repackaged it under their own name without the publisher and just shipped it out in a 1.0 release. This is not an MMO anymore. It's not meant to be an always online game. You can play it solo. You can play it by yourself. You can play it offline if you really want to. There are eight playable characters in the game. They all have their own skill trees, their own talent trees, and a plays kind of like an offline ARPG. So if you played like Grim Dawn or you like playing like Diablo or PoE by yourself in solo play, you can still play with teammates as well, join up in co-op and clear it out. But it's actually a good time and it's on sale right now for about 22 US dollars. They have a lot of different systems in the game, a lot of different ways to play and you can kind of level up your characters, max them out, get different gear. There's a lot of different customization systems that play into it. I've been checking out the 1.0 release and I'm actually pretty impressed with how it plays overall. It plays a little slower than you might expect, but it focuses more on the action combat rather than like a high-end spammy ARPG that you might experience. And the characters all feel pretty different. They have their own core abilities, but you can also put any weapon you want on them. Obviously, you're probably not going to put the heavy two-hander on the dagger assassin character because it'll slow them down too much, but you can play with a lot of different customizations and the abilities themselves can be modified through several different customization systems. Not only the gear and equipment and the modifying uh, factors for those, but also through like a overall affinity system, talent trees, and choosing how your play style goes. So if you like those kind of games and you have some time to play, I would say that the core story of the game is probably about 30 or 40 hours, but you'll get a lot more than that if you like to max out your characters, really farm and optimize builds, or if you like playing different characters all the way through and completing different content. You'll definitely feel that the game was meant to be an MMO when you first come into it. There's all these massive open areas, towns, the maps are pretty big, and you'll find all these vendors and areas where you'd probably expect players to be hanging out. So that that is definitely uh, evident as you move through the game. And what's cool is just like an ARPG where you have like map systems or rift systems or the pit or whatever, you're gonna have all these different systems where you can enter in to create boss fights, drop expeditions, and there's also gonna be a modifying system where you can increase the enemies, change what loot there is, change what difficulty modifiers are on it. So if you're used to to even like roguelikes like Hades changing the heat meter you're still going to have that modification system where you can create your own experience and also ramp up the difficulty and there's a bunch of systems to explore there's a reward tower where you can go through and actually complete it and going different branching paths getting different armor pieces and bonuses the gear itself has your main weapon which you can modify you can use whatever weapon you really want you can put a scythe on the tank character you can put a hammer on the dagger character and you can change characters at any time as well I've collected all the characters except for one but you can free really change these at any time and you'll be able to swap out into that character and be able to play it if you want just to kind of mix things together and there are ways to modify or amplify the characters as well you'll notice that the the gear itself has a five star system so you can level up and upgrade that gear you have the same thing for the characters as well so you can make those a lot stronger and combine them together in different ways and since there is co-op like look like you know online an instance co-op you can invite friends to play you can make a group where you play the tank
tank and someone plays the DPS and someone plays more of a support or CC or control and you can play all kinds of things together. Not only are there weapons and armor that have different set bonuses and stats for that as well, there are three accessory slots that all do different things. They have different stats. They have set bonuses on the accessories on top of that. You can get consumables as well and you'll also be able to modify the gear you have with different echoes that you collect through your loot. It doesn't stop there. You can max out your abilities. You can get new affinity, which has break points on the affinities to give you different bonuses and level ups. There's even a talent tree that you can go through for each character. So you can play in all different kinds of ways if that's what you're looking to explore. And there's little subtleties between characters as well. So you'll notice that when you swap out the weapon on a character, obviously that weapon's going to make a big difference. There's heavy and light attacks that all have different effects. There's a stagger system like you would expect from like a Souls-like kind of game where you can break the stagger on a many enemy, cause them to fall to the ground, deal bonus damage that way. And you can even cause the different abilities to do different things depending on how you play. There is a story in the game. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's something that's like particularly novel. It is. It does match the universe and there's something there to pay attention to if you really want to dive into it. And given the price right now where it is just about $22, if you're looking for a nice game to play for the next few weeks or even just over a weekend, or you want to grab it with some buds, link up with some different builds and play through the entire story, I think it's definitely worth checking out. Now, if you're in this position as a developer where you're, you're dropped as a publisher, your open beta didn't go well because of technical issues, but you still believe in the game, I'm actually pretty excited that they were able to finish it up. They even with their 1.0 release, they released a new character and some new content with this as well. So they just shipped it out the door. They're going to do like one more patch. And then they said that they'll continue supporting the game if there's interest. But if it doesn't, you know, it's not gangbusters. They're going to work on other projects and move on to other things. But it's a full closed end to end experience where you can jump in, play the game and explore it and have fun with it. So if you're looking for a game to just take a break from everything that's going on, all the new games that are launching, or you just need something to distract you with it, I think this is actually a really great pickup for a, for a very fair, decent price. And I think you'll have a good time with it if you like playing ARPGs or even Souls likes with a little bit more expansion on the customization systems and the progression systems. They do have four difficulty modes on top of the custom difficulty that you'll have on the end game activities as well. So you could end up making this extremely difficult and very build reliant if you wanted to. And of course, there's ranged and melee play styles that can really customize into it. I would say that the melee combat takes a little bit get to get used to at first, especially if you're used to faster style ARPGs. The pacing is a little bit slower and a little bit more deliberate. And obviously, there's going to be some learning around the, the systems and the gameplay itself but it's polished enough and functions well enough that i think it's a good time if you wanted to dive in um, i actually had fun with most of the characters some of them just weren't for me depending on how they played and sometimes the the melee combat just didn't strike just right but i found that some of the characters that have some nice interaction with their abilities some characters have really intricate um hit combos and also depending on the character their base functionality changes if you're playing one of these shield characters you will have a basic block and you can parry attacks but if you're playing the dagger character if you use the block button it actually becomes a feint which allows you to completely phase through attacks to avoid them completely the ranged character has a perfect reload functionality where he can reload his gun get a bonus damage and increase in fire rate if you hit the perfect reload just right there are combo synergy abilities if you wanted to play through this solo even within a single character and you can also modify that character to play differently because you're able to swap out the weapon and accessories freely any character can use any weapon you can play the dagger character as a sword and board with dagger abilities if you wanted and you can even swap out what the abilities do with the customization system and the overall talent tree depending on where you go in the talent tree you can make it more tanky you could make it more aoe more control focused more dps output and i think the boss fights themselves are interesting enough where you may find some abilities and some builds work better than others and i think it's a good time to explore especially if you have a friend or two that you want to jump on and do some co-op with but of course let me know if you are an old school wayfinder fan you've been playing the game since their uh, beta test and you followed all the way through 1.0 how you feel about the game or if you're someone who just tried out the 1.0 release let me know what your thoughts are because i think overall it's actually a really fun time if you found value in today's video leave a like down below leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people and don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things